a CNC vertical work table allows you to mount long pieces vertically, which is essential for CNC woodworking when you want to create joinery. For example, if I want to cut some dovetails on the end of this board. Now, one of the reasons I got an Avid CNC was strictly so I could have a vertical workstation. A lot of CNC machines don't have the ability to have one. With an Avid CNC, I knew I could make my own. So now I'm finally at that point of doing it. So I'm going to walk through my design considerations and then I'll go over how I built it. My CAD file will be available for free, so feel free to take the design and modify it for your own needs. Link for it will be in the description. Now it didn't make sense to reinvent the wheel, so I took heavy inspiration from Jay Bates and Frank Makes. I'll link to some other videos down in the description. And thanks guys for a lot of the great ideas you had. My general idea was the same as my spoil board design where I have one base sheet of MDF and T-tracks on top of that, then some MDF slats on top, which will hold the T-tracks down even stronger uh, to prevent any pull-out possibilities at all. I really do like using T-tracks, and for this project, I decided to space them out five inches, the same as my other regular spoil board table, and that seems to work pretty well. Now, Frank's design heavily relies on clamp holes, and I put a few in, but I didn't go too crazy with it. I did a square cutout which fits the head of all my clamps. Now I really like Jay's idea of using dogs to align things and so I replicated that idea here. I didn't go with as many dog holes as he did. I do wish I would have put another set along the middle and if you download my CAD file, I'll have it updated with another set down the middle. And the only reason is because if I want to cut short pieces, it gives me a spot to align them with. I did include some angle ones just like Jay I didn't go with as many because I don't feel like I'll cut a lot of angles, but I will have it there in case I ever want to do something for specific angles that are common, like 60, 30, 22 and a half, 45. So we have the dog holes for alignment. So obviously vertical ones are really simple. And what I can get from this guy is a 22 and a half angle. A 45. 30, and a 60. Now Frank's design allows the whole front of the table to be angled up, so it goes from vertical to whatever angle he wants, which is really clever. I just don't think it's something that I would do very often. If I want to do it, I think I can make a jig to hold things at the specific angle that I want. So on to the build. I cut a sheet of MDF down to size. I wasn't worried about getting too accurate of a cut, and I cut about an inch larger than I really needed. My first step was to make some shallow grooves for the T-tracks. This would help with alignment. But let me back up. I wanted to make sure the T-tracks would fit into the grooves, so I did a test piece cut to make sure it would fit in, and the alignment was pretty good. So I clamped down the oversized piece of MDF to my CNC table using the low profile toe clamps. I could then cut all the grooves for the T-tracks. I also pre-drilled pilot holes for all the T-tracks using a 7 64ths of an inch bit. Now I have a 7 64ths of an inch collet, so the bit was just put in the collet and I ran at a slow feed and speed to drill the holes out. Next I wanted to do a profile cut around the entire piece of MDF. I figured the best way to do this was one side at a time. So I removed clamps from one side, cut that side perfectly flat, put the clamps back on, and then did the other sides. This took a little bit of time, but ensured I had everything aligned and not moving. Now my vertical table is less than four feet wide, and I bought some four foot long tracks. I cut them in half and put them on my piece, and I realized they were a little bit too long. So I ended up cutting them so that they had about a one inch gap where they'd meet in the middle, and this would allow me to drop in the bolts and T-nuts and slide them in. The shallow T-track slots and the pilot holes made it really easy to screw on the tracks. So like I talked about earlier, I like to have the top slats overlap the T-tracks to assist with hold down power. I measured the distance between the two slats, and for me that was five and one eighths of an inch. I could then go and rip out all the slats on the table saw. 
Next, I had to cut out a rabbit so that the slats would fit over the T-tracks. And there's lots of ways to do this. I decided to use the router table. I just did a few test cuts until I found the right depth. And then I could make it a little bit wider until the slats fit in just perfectly. I decided to go for a more permanent table and glued the slats onto the MDF. In my regular table, I made it so the slats were removable with hold down screws. And I think if I were to do it again, I probably would just glue them down because I rarely will actually cut into my spool board and I'm gonna consider it kind of more of a permanent piece. The hardest part about gluing the slats to the MDF is getting the clamping pressure right. I used some long pieces of scrap wood to clamp them down onto my table and that worked but it made the wood bow and usually you'd use a cowl to kind of make a fake cowl I just put a little bit of a piece of wood in the middle to give a downward pressure in the middle of it and then clamped it there again. The only other interesting thing to note is the top slat I left a little bit long because I knew it could cut it perfectly flat on the CNC table after it was mounted. The next step was to get back onto the CNC machine. Unfortunately, at this time, I noticed the glue up actually caused it to warp just a slight bit, but I'll deal with that later. So for now, I decided to just clamp it down really tight. I machined all the holes for the clamps and the dog holes, but I forgot to do a test for the dog holes to make sure they fit really well. Luckily, the dogs fit extra tight, and that meant I could make the dog holes a little bit larger until the dogs fit in really well. So I threw a scrap piece on top and did a few test cuts, just setting the stock to leave to be a negative amount in Fusion 360 until I got it to fit really well, which was really just another maybe negative two thousandths uh, to get it to fit. I could then run the same toolpath again on all the dog holes and have it cut them so they all fit perfectly. Now at this point, I needed to surface the entire piece. I decided to test for flatness and it really varied, I don't know, somewhere from 10 to 15 thousandths when I ran uh, my Heimer across the table or a dial indicator. And that was just too much of a variance for me. But here's the problem, which I kind of hinted at earlier. When I remove the clamps, the workpiece curls up. And when I measure it, it curls up about 30 thousandths of an inch, which is quite a bit. So I could go and ignore the curl and just surface the entire top, which would make it perfectly flat. But then when I mount the vertical table down to my uh, machine, it will make it warped again. So I need it to be tightly held down without any curl to ensure that everything's really flat. But luckily, I've been recently working on some side clamping devices to deal with a problem just like this. So let me show you how these little devices work. So there's an angle here so that when this is tightened down, the clamping force will go downwards and outwards at the same time. The little teeth will bite into the workpiece and hold it down really tight. So this guy can just slip into the T-tracks and they slide, they slide fairly easily. Slide them against my piece. I tighten down the main back one and then the camming one can be tightened down against my piece. So I put some dogs on the opposite side of my workpiece from the cam clamps, and the cam clamps just push the workpiece tight against those dogs. But I was noticing that the side against the dogs was still lifting up, so I just took some more of the cam clamps and put them on that dog side, and they clamped it right down and made it perfectly flat. And so this gave me a completely unobstructed flat surface I could machine entirely. I was still a little bit paranoid and during the process of surfacing it with a two inch bit, I did go and manually move some of the side clamps just to ensure it was pushed down really tight. My plan was to use the top aluminum extrusion on the CNC table, the 8040 stuff, and just put some the uh, T-nuts into it and then screw those on into the top. But since I welded my own base, I didn't have any extrusions on the bottom that I could attach to. So instead, I just went and grabbed a piece of wood, machined it really flat, and put against the bottom. I took the piece of wood and put it at roughly level, 
and then drilled a, a hole through the piece of wood to kind of mark where the hole would line up. I then drilled and tapped the steel with some threads. The wood itself, I just cut a slightly larger slot so I'd have some adjustability in it. So for the top, I put in the sliding T-nuts at the locations of where each of my holes were located at. Okay, I'm fairly strong and I figured I could just hold the vertical work table in place and then put the screws in on the top, but MDF is super heavy and that just wasn't working. So my car jack came to the rescue. I could use my foot to kind of pump it up and get roughly aligned. I put one bolt in on one side, put another bolt in on the other side, I roughly aligned it, and left the bolts a little bit loose so I could have some adjustability coming up. There are several ways to ensure the table is perfectly level with the travel of the gantry and the movement of the z-axis. My first idea was to mount a dowel indicator on the spindle. I used a magnetic mount and I put on the spindle the portion that doesn't rotate and that way nothing would move around but I could jog the machine back on the x-axis. Now all the spoil board dog holes are positioned based on the top location of my spoil board. So my first inclination was to just jog the dial indicator against the top and align it there. However, this piece of MDF, even though I accurately cut it, was just moving a little bit too much. And by moving a little bit too much, I was seeing the dial indicator go up about 10 thousandths of an inch. And that was just too much variation for what I wanted. And really the position of the top doesn't really matter. What's really important are the dog hole locations because those are what I'm going to use to align my work pieces with. So I put some dogs in the dog holes and I could then put a little piece of MDF on top of those and run my dial indicator across that because that's what really matters. Now this kind of worked, but my piece of MDF was just a little bit too small and flimsy. I think if I really wanted to do this approach, I would take the piece of MDF and machine two parallel sides very accurately and then use those parallel sides to tram in the spoil board table. But that's not what I ended up doing. When I built my main CNC table, I used a precision level to level everything. And since I had that level, it fit perfectly across my first two dog holes. And my first step was to verify my table was still level it was, and then I could use my precision level to level the dog holes accurately. So once I knew the top dogs were perfectly level, I knew that my vertical ones would be perfectly perpendicular to the spindle. But the next thing I had to deal with was to ensure that the flat surface here and the flat surface here was perfectly perpendicular. I decided to use the dial indicator to do that. I mounted a piece of MDF vertically just to give me a long area to run against. And then I ran the dial indicator up and down until I got very little movement on the indication. And by very little movement, I decided about five thousandths was probably acceptable for this position. So at that point, I needed to actually attach the bottom together. And I didn't want to overthink it. I just drilled some pilot holes through and used some wood screws to hold the two together. Next, I stuck my two inch surfacing bit back in the machine and I decided to manually jog and surface the top exactly at my spool board level. I accidentally went the wrong direction at first because I was manually jogging it and I was starting to get some chip out so I had to start again from the other side to avoid that problem. So finally I could test it out. I designed a simple dovetail joint in Fusion 360 and did some tool pass and cam which I'll probably talk about in some later videos. I used a dovetail bit to cut out the tails, and then I used a straight bit to cut out the pins. The straight bit was a little bit short, but everything worked out. And I only put about one thousandth of an inch clearance, and to my surprise, this pine wood actually fit together a little bit excessively tight, but it did fit together. Not bad for my first vertical CNC work table joint. Now, I'm really excited to use my vertical work table. I have a lot of ideas that I'm going to make with it. So follow along and see what I do. Thanks, everyone.